Uh, my name is Matthew Ellison. Uh, I live in Coventry, um, which is not in London. <laughs> um, I'm 26, uh, married now, and um, my family has a background of Huntington's disease. I reached out to a genetic counsellor because I, well, with Huntington's disease, you're, you're at risk 50% that you might have it. Um, my dad had Huntington's, um, so I'd, I'd watched him progress for a long time. You know, most of my childhood, I'd watched him progress with Huntington's and knew that I was at risk for a, a long time. Um, and I decided when I was about 18, I started thinking about testing quite a lot and my own risk. And that's when I decided that I wanted to get tested. And I was quite adamant that I wanted to be tested. Um, so that's why I reached out to the genetic counselor at that point. I know that most people um, who are at risk for Huntington's disease don't get tested. Like about 90% of people at risk choose not to get tested. Um, I think for me personally, I wanted to um, know what was going to happen in my future so that I could plan around that. Um, and it wasn't really about doing things differently, whether I tested positive or negative. It was more about if I tested positive, do things a bit quicker maybe, speed up the, the, the plan a little bit. Um, that was all really the, only, the main reason why I wanted to get tested because there's not a huge amount you can do in terms of treatments uh, at this point for Huntington's disease. So it really is a case of do you want to know if you have it or not? Uh, and for me, I, I, I felt better that I knew if I had it or not. So that's why I got tested. Okay. The result I got was positive, meaning it was not so positive, so it was bad news. Um, and, you know, when you find that out and, you know, you, that you're at risk for Huntington's disease and then you find out that you're definitely going to get it, it's a very kind of surreal moment when you get given that news and it's, it's so quick at times as well because you kind of just go in and uh, you sit down and then straight away it's like, okay, sorry, it's bad news, positive. And uh, I remember my mum was with me and she was already crying as soon as she said sorry. It was just like, and I was trying to, trying to stay strong and, and just kind of like, digest the news. Um, I think I'd kind of, I'd spent a long time kind of preparing myself for the fact that I might be positive. Um, and I felt that preparing for the fact that I was, I might be negative would be a lot easier. So I was spending a lot of time focusing on what if I'm positive, how am I going to deal with that? Um, and so I, I kind of, I'd done as much preparation as I felt I could do, but really it's never really enough to, to take in all that information and just kind of accept it like that. It, it, it takes a lot longer to accept that kind of information. After I got tested, I mean, it, the, the first day felt very surreal. That's the best way to describe it. It was just kind of um, complete blur. Um, because you're getting news which is going to change the way you view your life from here on out. So it's, it's really huge news. Um, I think for the next two or three weeks, I didn't really take it in. I was kind of, I knew my results, but I wasn't really able to digest it much. Um, then a few months down the line, you kind of, you had a bit more time to think about things. And I think about three to six months it took me to really I'd say adjust and then also kind of accept where I am right now and accept that it was positive. Um, and, uh, you know, I kind of let myself just kind of be a little bit depressed for a few months as well and just kind of not do too much in life um, because I felt that's what I needed at that point and that, you know, when I'm ready, I can pick myself up and, you know, when I know what I want to do from here on out, and then I can go off and do it. And that's really what I tried to do. Um, and when I got tested, I really wanted to use it as motivation um, to go on and, and just do what I wanted to do in life.